Okay, um, I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, Blake did a pretty thorough job of things. I did want to mention on the army worm um, aspect, uh, one of the ways, so the army worms are going to be found more often in the morning and the evening feeding. And so if you're looking for them in the middle of the day, um, you might be able to see like the frass pellets on the ground or kind of in the leaf whirls to tip you off. Um, but I did want to note, um, last week, so May 13th, um, one of the people on the Ardine farm here found the next generation of army worms. So they are still kind of out and about, but it wasn't on sugarcane. It was on another grass species that we have on the station. Um, but talking to the Florida folks who track army worms, um, it's pretty rare they said to have to replant anything. Um, but the strain that we're looking at is probably a rice strain instead of the corn sorghum strain. So we'll look into that a little bit more. Um, okay, and so I'm just kind of go over a little bit of what we have currently on the docket for this year, because um, I'm pretty new, so we're still, you know, collecting data. So one of the things that we're looking at is this board seed cane. So we're looking at billets versus whole stocks. There's been a lot of work done in terms of looking at clean whole stocks. Um, and so the fall emergence, um, we've already got, we're still waiting for the spring stuff and the yield. Um, but essentially what we had was we had clean whole stocks we put out there and clean billets. And then we had board whole stocks and billets. And that was like a bore percentage of 33% uh, of the inner nodes were bored when we put them out. And so at least in the fall, um, it looks like, the you know, especially on the billets in September, the clean stock's still a little bit better, but it wasn't actually statistically significant. So we have a lot of variation. So I'll be kind of curious to see how they overwintered and what they look like through the summer. Um, and this is pretty similar to work uh, Blake and Randy had done before I got here where they were looking at clean and board whole stocks of the two varieties. Um, and again, you can see this also wasn't statistically significant. We had a lot of variability because of some hog damage. Um, so we'll be interested to, you know, just make sure that the billets, you know, get a good idea of how the billets are being impacted, you know, and keeping your seed cane clean. Um, and kind of piggybacking on that, we have a seed treatment study that we put on the ground using board billets. So again, some pretty highly infested seed cane we threw in the ground and um, we put in clean billets. Uh, we did an infrared spray of platinum, quilt XL, and then a combination of the platinum and quilt. And so we've been monitoring the fall emergence and we'll get some spring data. And then the main thing that we're kind of looking at is to make sure that it's not impacting fire ants or some of these other beneficial insects out there, um, in addition to kind of the subsequent bore damage. Um, so like our board, you know, billet versus full stock, uh, we haven't seen any significant differences between the treatments in the fall. Uh, but again, it'll be interesting to see in the spring, and then once we get our pitfall trap data analyzed and some of our predation studies to see what actually is going on. So I guess with that, yeah, I'd like to thank the USDA staff and uh, the League for funding, um, and I guess we'll take questions.